Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this short game to different video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news which, as usual, popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to start things out with Intel's 10 and 7 NM process. That's right, I did say 7 NM process. The deep ultraviolet lithography of the 10 NM process has proven to be a pain in the buttocks for Intel. And by pain in the buttocks, mass production of Intel's processors should have shifted to 10 NM back in 2016. If you were to look at Intel's Coffee Lake processors or any of their high-end uh, HEDT processors or server processors, well, yeah, no, they haven't. Technically, they do have 10 nm CPUs, but they are, for all intents and purposes, just PR pieces for Intel to say that we do have 10 nm processors, honestly. But the reality is they don't really. So... It's meant that the roadmap for the company has significantly changed over the past couple of years compared to what it was supposed to have been. And Intel uh, allegedly are looking to get 10 nm in mass production, mass volume, by late 2019. I'll believe it when I see it, quite frankly, but there you go. However, if they do manage to get it on the shelves by 2019, that is the CPUs which actually use uh, 10 nm, it might actually be a relatively short-lived cycle because the 7NM process from Intel is allegedly on schedule. And this means that 10NM might be quickly superseded by the 7NM process. The Chief Engineering Officer and President of Technology, Systems and Architecture and Client Group at Intel said, and I quote, 7NM for us is a separate team and a largely separate effort. We are quite pleased with our progress on 7NM. In fact, very pleased with our progress on 7NM. I think that we have taken a lot of lessons out from the 10 nm experience. <laughs> I'm sorry, I could have, I had to laugh. As we defined that and defined a different optimization point between the transistor density, power, and performance and schedule predictability. So we are very, very focused on getting 7NM out according to our original internal plans. One thing I will say is that when you look at 7NM, for us, this is really now a point in time where we will get EUV back into the manufacturing matrix and therefore I think that will give us a degree of back to the traditional Moore's or Candice that we were really talking about with 7NM we are going back to more like a two times scaling factor and that really moving forward with that goal. Given the meme like status of the 10NM process I hope for Intel's sake they can keep on track because otherwise they're going to get demolished by AMD's roadmap. We know that Zen 2, of course, is going to launch 2019 in various forms, whether it's going to be in the server or the desktop market. But then after that, AMD are maintaining their aggressiveness by then releasing Zen 3 and so on and so on, which have various refinements in both architecture and the process. Zen 3, if you recall, has various improvements to reduce power consumption and yes, Allegedly, there are some IPC gains, at least according to uh, AMD, but they're going to really focus on efficiency for that particular architecture, which could spell even further issues for Intel, particularly in the data center, which is probably where they're going to get hit the hardest. Because obviously, if you have someone like Dell, if you have someone like Microsoft as clients, and they are buying up thousands, hundreds of thousands of processors over a year, that means a lot of dollars that potentially could be lost from uh, from those sales. Next up, would you like to win a Ryzen 7 3700X or a Ryzen 5 3600X? Well, would you? Well, there is actually a competition going around right now where you can actually have a chance to win one of these processors. And no, we're not hosting it. I spotted this originally on Twitter where it was quickly doing the rounds. It's not actually AMD themselves that are conducting this uh, competition. Instead, it's a CPU sales agency which AMD hired to do local events and contests. So what you need to do, in a nutshell, is to guess the uh, Cinebench score for both the 3700X and the Ryzen 5 3600X. And the contest will then end on December the 14th. And then, of course, you will win one of these two processors but they do not have a date for the time that the processors are going to be released and they do not have a date that the competition's winner will you know receive their particular processor 
Now, this is not the first time that AMD have actually uh, had a competition, or at least, you know, in conjunction with AMD, have had a competition to win a prize that wasn't released until several months later. This actually happened with Vega as well, where in January, AMD put this competition up, and then obviously it was several months later, I believe it was August, that the actual Vega 64s and 56s were launched. So obviously that was quite the gap. So don't get excited and think, well, you know, late December is when these processors are going to launch. The timing of the competition is obviously just to get people all hyped up. So if you happen to see a really good deal on Ryzen 2600X around the Christmas period, don't feel that you're going to pick it up and then a few minutes later it's going to be significantly out of date. And I'll use the 2600X because, well, I personally believe it is the best value processor right now for gaming. So I've got a quick question for you all. What's the very first thing you do when you install Windows and you load your Edge web browser? Come on, be honest. Go on. That's right, you Google Chrome, or you would Google, or you would Bing, maybe you would use Bing if you're, you know, feeling super generous, you would Bing Firefox, and then of course that would be the end of it, you would not ever load up Edge again, unless you're a web designer and you're testing compatibility, and Microsoft have decided to give up on Edge, or at least its own version of Edge. Instead, it's going to be leveraging the open source Chromium project, which of course is spearheaded by Google, but it is keeping the Edge name and branding. Firefox and Mozilla are not actually happy about this. In fact, they said that now Microsoft are doing this, they believe it's more important than ever that Firefox is out there to give an alternative because, because ultimately it means that Chromium now has an even larger share of the market. I am curious though, because yes, you're going to have the nomenclature, of course, of the uh, Edge browser remaining with the Chromium core, uh, core, but I do wonder if people are still going to just go ahead and Google Chrome. I don't know if it's actually going to make much of a difference. And obviously Microsoft are doing this because they realize that there's just not much they can do now. They can't do the, the adverts. I mean, they actually at one point were doing things like Oh, hey, you don't need to download uh, Chrome. Uh, the Edge web browser is a fast way of browsing the internet and all this crazy stuff. And of course, it didn't really make any difference. So I think Microsoft do know that the battle's lost and that people really do just love the Chromium browser and its family of extensions and so on. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. It's a bit shorter than normal. You might also remember I mentioned yesterday about this system which I was going to start reviewing and it was going to be the last thing I was going to do before I started to pack my bags and that has actually changed. There's a reason behind that. They actually sent me the wrong unit. So yeah, I'm not going to be reviewing that because, well, for obvious reasons. Um, and other than that, I will be traveling uh, to Seattle uh, next Friday this week, though, a friend of mine, she is coming over from America, and I'm going to be showing her around London. But next uh, week, I will be most likely in the United States because I'm going to be spending Christmas there because I don't really have uh, much family in the United Kingdom, to be totally honest. So I got invited by several friends to spend some time over in America and just kind of get away from it all. But with that said, I still will be producing content. But yeah, so I thought I'd just let you all know. And once again, you can uh, decide to meet me if you so desire. I've already met up with a couple of viewers last time I was there, um, but I'm now friends with them, actually. <laughs> uh, so you are welcome to meet me. You can email me at paul at redgamingtech.com. And that's about it, actually, for this video. With all of that said, 